Um, well, thanks for coming. Um, this is just like a homecoming reunion for our trip, which was an amazing, wonderful experience, and you'll hear more, more about it in the moments ahead. I just wanted to give kind of a brief introduction. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the setup to the trip, and then we're going to have a, a presentation of some images from two of the students, and then four of the students will talk about how the Kenya trip changed them or some of the most um, important moments for them on the trip and, and um, how it, coming back their own experiences as well. So actually this trip is something that I planned I think about a dozen years ago, which is sort of discouraging. It takes a long time to get a trip going. Um, really it was probably longer than that because it was before I even came to Bethel. I, I heard somebody from Daystar University um, speak and I was really impressed with him and, and talked with him afterwards about an idea of someday taking Bethel journalism students to Daystar and our trip to Kenya um, really kind of gravitated around contacts at Daystar University. We spent about a week on the Daystar at the River campus which is outside of Nairobi, roughly a week in Nairobi and then we had the last week in uh, Mombasa on the coast and we did a short safari and enjoyed a lot of great memories on the beach so you'll you'll see some images from that that time as well uh, but the purpose of the trip was to study the media in Kenya and you might think why Kenya um, one of my commitments to our journalism program is to see that students understand a little bit about the media internationally and Obviously, in a small program like ours, we can't have a specific international emphasis, but I think even going to one country and understanding how the media operate there can really change your understanding of the role of the media in the U.S. and, and also how it differs from what we understand here. Um, much of our time was spent talking about and reading It's Our Turn to Eat, uh, the story of a Kenyan whistleblower, which is about a politician and journalist who um, who became part of the government and then a whistleblower within the government and kind of his his role and the difficulty in bringing about social change in in Kenya. I think it was really eye opening for students to see. Um, with, well, let me back up a minute. Before we left, everyone read the the River B Between, which is a novel. Um, that really points out some of the uh, difficulties in um, kind of uh, Western view intersect intersecting with a tribal view. And we talked a lot about how um, tribal loyalties and commitments are still uh, relevant for Kenyans today. Uh, the 2007 elections revealed that where there was a lot of violence. Uh, but in other ways as well, people are identified by their tribal connections, and that influences uh, current politics. Um, the media in Kenya is largely English language, and so it makes for an easy uh, transition for 
of us to go to a country where there are English language newspapers. Most people, professional people, speak English, so you're able to interact that way. We had some wonderful uh, visits uh, to a variety of media outlets, um, Nation Media, the largest um, media news organization in East Africa. Uh, we visited there and also students did uh, job shadowing, which for some was pretty uh, powerful and uh, Sarah, maybe you'll get to tell your story, I don't know, but um, we had some interesting um, circumstances where students followed journalists on, on their story assignments. Um, we, we also went to the uh, Media Council of Kenya, a uh, couple TV stations and radio stations, and then also heard from journalists. In addition, we, when we were on the Daystar campus, we had lectures from three of Daystar's communications faculty who really helped provide a context for understanding uh, how the media function in Kenya and some of the challenges um, in trying to bring about social change. I, I think it's fair to say that all of us um, had this understanding of how really difficult it is when you look out on the Kenyan landscape, you think, well, why doesn't this change or why doesn't that change? But you see how interconnected things are and how difficult social change is. And then, in looking back in a, on our own history, we realized that um, it hasn't been just a upward trajectory. There's been violence against the media. There's been all kinds of issues that we've dealt with in the U.S. We sometimes gloss over our own history and think, why don't other countries develop more quickly? But really, there's been an amazing speed of development in a place like Kenya. So that those are some of the things that we talked about and, and learned about. The trip was open to students who were not all journalism majors. In fact, well, I had a nice core of journalism majors, and um, that was great. But also, it was just an amazing group of students. And it's wonderful to lead a trip with Bethel students. I say that with a and of one, you know, I've done this once, so maybe, <laughs> maybe I will. Amen, amen. Yeah, yeah. Um, but great students, and everybody pitched in um, for um, activities. Uh, students all contributed to a blog uh, that we kept on the trip. Uh, they also did interviews with students and faculty and athletes and other people at Daystar and wrote up those stories for a special edition out of Africa edition of the uh, clarion that was pu pulled together after we returned. Um, then we had um, class discussions and other things as well, journals that were kept, but I felt like everybody really uh, participated and valued from it whether or not they were, were journalism students. So overall it was really a great time. I felt like um, one of the one of the critical factors, probably maybe the most important factor in a trip like this is who you have on the ground, in country, helping to make those arrangements for your trip. And we had an uh, amazing um, opportunity to have um, Jessica Haslin, daughter of Robin, who lives in Kenya and has lived there on and off for the last dozen years or so. And Jessica just knows tons of people and has an amazing ability to make things happen and um, uh, find, she was also able to cut a lot of costs for us by finding local transportation and all kinds of things. So we had a really rich experience uh, thanks, thanks to Jessica's efforts. So that was, that was really wonderful. So I'm not, that's all I'm gonna say and I think Sarah and Emma are gonna come and um, they have spent hours pulling together what I hear is going to be an amazing presentation of some of the photo highlights of our trip.
we just put a, together a little show of some pictures to explain the different things we did while we were there. So um, this is a picture of our group. Jumbo means hello. <laughs> we heard that quite a lot while we were there. Um, yeah. And then, for anybody who doesn't know, that is where Kenya is located in Africa, right on the eastern side. And we were able to spend time in Central, and then Central is more where Nairobi was, and then we went all the way down to the coast, to Mombasa. So this is the first place where we stayed. Um, we got to stay in kind of like a bed and breakfast type place. Um, and the hostess and her daughters and some of their helpers made us um, meals every day. And it was just really awesome. And Karen was kind of more of a local place, not super touristy, not super big city. So it was really cool to see that kind of thing right away when we came in. It's um, the place where Karen Blixen's estate was from out of Africa. And so it was a really nice area. Redempta, the person who um, owned the bed and breakfast, was so kind and welcoming to us. And she was a really great hostess. So we stayed there for a couple days right when we got there. We went to a giraffe center. We got oh. to kiss giraffes, which was really fun. <laughs> Apparently they're saliva has some kind of antiseptic in it. So it was fine that we were kissing giraffes. It was great. Yeah, it was really cool to go there um, early on in the trip because then we knew some of like the information about the different species of giraffes that we later saw like in the wild on our safari. So that was awesome. So um, next up, we got to go to Gong, which was another kind of more more of a local feel. Uh, we went to church up here is where the church was that we went to. Um, we had to stay with host families for a night, which was really amazing. Uh, it was really cool to be able to do that right away. Yeah, we all kind of had different experiences with our host families. Um, some people had very wealthy host families who lived up in the Gong Hills, um, which is a very beautiful part of the Nairobi area. And then some of us had um, a little bit poorer host families, which was also an extremely awesome experience. And it was really cool to all come back together to the church the next morning mm -hmm. and be able to share experiences. And you know, that's when we got really, really um, authentic home cooked meals from our host families. And I know a lot of us had like host little siblings were running around. That was like our second night, so we were all extremely exhausted from nine hour jet lag. But they were such um, inviting people and welcoming. We heard a lot of Kerry Booney, which means welcome, welcome. <laughs> Those, and so those are some of the um, up there. Some of the kids that we met at the church. There were kids everywhere, and they always followed us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we um, went to Mathari Slum, which is within Gong, which was where a lot of the um, kids from the church that we met lived. And that's one of the elders of the slum, and he kind of took us around and showed us like people's homes and like. Um, uh, he showed us like where people worked, and so that was really cool. We had like a tour guide who lived there. Yeah. And right here in the bottom right, this is another part of Gong, which was blocks away from where the slum was. So it was really incredible to see. It's it is a completely different part of town, but it's right next door to you know big commercial area. And then like from the slum, you can see the beautiful wealthy houses up on the hills. So it's kind of crazy. And this is um, Gong Hills. We went hiking a bit. Some of us went all the way to the top. Some um, went and hung out with some kids. And so it was a really beautiful experience. We had a 15-year-old boy from who lived in the slum who kind of took us around, John. And he took us up there. And it was just really fun to have him like show us where he goes to like go outside and like hang out. So we climbed all the way up there. Lots of roaming goats. and animals everywhere. <laughs> also on those hills there are wind uh, turbines. So you know you've got something that's very rural but mm -hmm. then you, you've also got the wind turbines that are a big industry. I would say they say that there's like three of them and they power like most of Gong. Like it was crazy. So then after Gong we went back to Nairobi and stayed at um, Flora Hostel, which you can see on the left here, for a week. And this is when we did a lot of our like media house visits and our job shadowing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so here we are. We're visiting, um, I believe this is at Nation Media, is that right? Um, which is one of the biggest media hosts in that area in Africa, which was really cool. That's also where we did our job shadowing the next day, which we have some fun stories from. Yeah, I can tell a story from job shadowing. <laughs> um, so I'm a journalism major, so I was um, connected with a reporter at Nation Media that I would get to chat up for the day. And it was a really awesome opportunity. He was um, a political reporter, which is something I'm really interested in. So um, a day that started out with me just sitting there and reading newspapers quickly turned into something a little more exciting. Um, he got a press conference call to go to a press conference for the um, Ministry of Agriculture in Kenya. And there was some new thing about um, like water safety and like um, the water on like vegetation and stuff. And um, so I went with him and I was extremely uncomfortable and out of my element. And um, but it was so cool to see there were like 50 reporters in there and the Minister of Agriculture came out and I guess that it was something that um, I couldn't understand half of what was going on. They all talked really fast and in accents, but there was something um, that a lot of like citizens weren't very happy about and so it kind of got to be like a dispute and um, the Minister of Agriculture um, I guess was very worried about people leaving like reporters leaving this press conference with bad ideas of what he said and like writing badly about him so I was leaving and I was with my um, the reporter that I was shadowing and he asked me he goes will you take the gift and I first thought is I don't really know what that means but then I was like I I'm a journalism student I have learned that as a journalist you don't take any form of bribery like you don't even accept somebody buying you lunch and they had already given us tea and food I was like I already felt uncomfortable with that but I'm just shadowing and like in a place I'm kind of uncomfortable and I was like well I don't want to like that's not how I've been taught and he goes, well, they won't let you leave the room if you don't. <laughs> okay, so here I am on my own on a job shadow. And I ended up having to receive a thousand shillings from the Ministry of Agriculture and in order to leave this press conference. So it ended up that we all got dessert on the <laughs> Kenyan government that night. But <laughs> it was definitely an experience as a journalism student to remember and to always have that experience. So that was, it was very cool though, because I feel like I really got to jump into actual, like Kenyan media, like the government corruption that comes with a lot of media around the world. And so that was a very good firsthand experience. <laughs> but yeah, I know a lot of people had some amazing experiences during the sh job shadow. Um, two of the students who are biokinetics majors actually got to go to a hospital instead of go to Nation Media, which was really great for them to see like how hospitals work there and like how not sanitary they are compared to America and like we took really cool experiences in our field of study. Yeah. And so um, yeah that week was spent in Nairobi. Flora hostel was amazing. I think we all began to feel like it was home. Um, we had great food there. Every night we spent playing our favorite card game, Resistance. And yeah, it was a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. So this is um, one of the slums, or the slum in Nairobi, which is, I believe, the second largest slum in the world. Um, so we got to visit Kibera. Um, we were taken by a couple guards you could see on the right. And they just walked us through, and we got to meet um, somebody who started a clinic in Kibera, who actually is a graduate of Daystar. And he kind of took us through as well. He used to live um, in Kibera, and he showed us his old house. And it was just really, really powerful to see somebody who has become so successful. Um, he started in a place like this, and it was amazing. Yeah, but yeah, you can just kind of see like the expanse of how big it is. And that, I mean, that picture doesn't even begin to cover it. It was very humbling to be there, to know that there were like only 14 of us total and we had to have four guards um, walking through. But then you meet people like these kids who, um, we were taught that Jumbo actually means how are you as a direct translation, not hello. And so these kids, like our first Swahili word that we would learn is Jumbo. And so their first English is how are you. 
And so we're, whenever we walked by, we'd hear like a chant of kids going, how are you? How are you? And it was the cutest thing. And it just like made us feel extremely welcome. And it was just like wherever we walked, they just like would run out at us. And it was amazing. You can see there how happy and excited they were. And um, yeah, it was very humbling to see like so many joyful people there. I know that we kept a blog while we were there. I know a lot of people wrote about um, like happiness and joy that you see from such humble people and simple people. So that was really awesome, especially to see Paul was the guy who started the clinic, to see um, how proud he was of where he came from and how proud he was of how hard he worked to get out of Cabrera. Because a lot of people, like if they're born in Cabrera, they live there their whole life and then their kids live there and like they said, it's like a its own city within Nairobi. Like nobody says they're from Kibera, Nairobi. They say they're from Kibera, Kenya. And so like that's very interesting. And we went to Daystar University for a week, <laughs> which was awesome. Um, we were there the first week of their semester, and we were quite surprised to find out that nobody goes to class the whole first week of school. So <laughs> we, were a little, we were a little questioning. We came back to Bethel if we could stay on Kenyan time and not go to class the first week, but that's not how it works here. <laughs> yeah, we quickly realized that they're very relaxed about time, and that's something you find, I guess. Um, but, I mean, an example of that is we went to chapel when it was supposed to start, which was actually an hour before it actually started. So, <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was a lot of fun to experience that. Um, and I like I remember one night we were supposed to meet some people for dinner and they were like almost two hours late, which was awesome. Was yeah, fine. and they were like they were, they were the reporters we had shadowed, <laughs> and so we were like done eating. We went to an Ethiopian restaurant. And we were like done eating, and then they showed up and like, oh hello, <laughs> we're on Kenyan time. I forgot. Yeah. It was like, great, but we got to experience that pretty firsthand at Daystar, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. And we this is where we interviewed a lot of students for the articles for the Clarion that we wrote, and that was really awesome. Sarah and I and another girl got to interview two students from South Sudan just about their experiences and their families there and it was yeah. awesome. It was really cool to hear about like um, a place that's in such like turmoil and war and to hear from students who are like very hopeful for their home. Like one of the girls that we interviewed was like I know that South Sudan's gonna get better and like I know that we're gonna be a great country and like I don't know how people can judge us from afar because we've only been a country for like two years. You guys have been a country for how long? Like, it was just really cool to hear firsthand from somebody who's from a country like that that we just like, hear on the news every once in a while. Yeah, so it was really cool to stay at the university and be able to like learn alongside students in our fields and in our majors that are learning the same stuff as us all the way across the world. <laughs> And when we were at Daystar, we were able to walk to a couple of orphanages. Um, this is one, I think this is the first day we went and we all played soccer with the boys, which is so much fun. Um, there will be stories about that. Yeah, that one was for like, what was it, like 12 to 18 year old boys. And then the other one was for much younger boys and girls. Yeah. yeah. So but it was cool. They were really close to Daystar and we, we walked to both of them. And it was awesome to see what those people are doing and how, what a community they are in their own little areas. And yeah, and they were very different orphanages because the one we played soccer at was started by a woman in Kenya, and it definitely was one that didn't have as much money. And then um, the other one we went to was started by uh, U.S. missionaries, and it had a lot more money. You could just tell by like the um, facilities and stuff, like the difference. But it was really cool. They were both really awesome, and I know we had a ton of fun. And then we went to Mombasa. This is our vacation. <laughs> the trip, which, um, this was out on the coast, so first we spent kind of like half a day in Old Town Mombasa, which was really cool to see. Um, it was a very different part of Kenya than I think we were used to. I felt like I had gone to a different country entirely. Mm -hmm. But this part of Kenya is very Muslim, and it was really different to see. Yeah, a lot of Kenya is very Christian, so we hadn't had like the um, like religious differences yet. But then we went to Mombasa, which was very Muslim. It was really awesome to see. And um, on the right is Fort Jesus, which is a uh, fort right on the side of Mombasa from when the Portuguese invaded or something. Yeah, it was really cool to see. And that's our that was our first view of the ocean right there. 
I would say we were all pretty happy to see the water. And then we went to our beach houses. <laughs> it was beautiful. Yeah, it was wonderful. Well, this is one of them. We had two, which were awesome. We had two um, beach houses and two pools. Yeah. So that's like our pool up there. Our first day, we found three camels wandering along the beach. <laughs> And of course, we had to ride them all, so. We now got to ride camels <laughs> yeah. on the side of the Indian Ocean. Not many people can say that. Yeah. Um, and we also woke up like at 5 a.m. every morning to try to watch the sunrise. So that was being too cloudy, one but. Of the pictures from that. Yeah, there was one morning we finally saw it. And it was just like a cool experience to know that we were so relaxed and like on the beach that waking up at 5 a.m. wasn't a big deal. And we all just like wandered out to the beach and sat there and watched the sunrise. That was really cool to just like take that in. And you can see it was quite beautiful. <laughs> and our ongoing joke was that everybody in Minnesota was so cold and we felt like we were on spring break when we were at um, the ocean and we'd go swimming. And so we nicknamed that part of the trip spring break 2014, even though it was in January. <laughs> and then we went on safari for the last day or day and a half which was awesome. I personally didn't expect to see this many animals that up close, which was really cool. These lions were like maybe 10 feet away from us. And we saw tons of elephants. Um, and the landscape was amazing. If you watch the Lion King, it like really looks like that. Yeah. It's awesome. We were definitely singing every Lion King song <laughs> in our um, safari vans. But like, there was one time where we saw a herd of elephants that was like 30 elephants. It was crazy. Like We did not expect to see what we saw. It was great. We had um, one safari that we went on uh, from like 3 p.m. to like 7 p.m., so kind of an afternoon one. And then we stayed at Boy Safari Lodge, which is beautiful. Um, it was like a hotel right um, like within the park, and they had watering holes. So you would actually see like elephants like come up to the watering holes at the, at the hotel, which was really cool. And then the next morning, we woke up really early and went on like a 5 a.m. safari. So that we got to see the sunrise, and that was beautiful. And then we, after the safari, we went back to Nairobi for one day, and then we got on our two nine-hour plane rides home. And you can see we, we were, it was a very, very long trip home. We're all sunburned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had very long flights, very long layover. We were traveling for like two days total. And we, a couple of us tried to watch The Lion King on the way home. Not a smart idea, too many tears. <laughs> we were all very sad to leave, but as you can see, we had a great time. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have for you. <laughs> so then there's going to be a couple of testimonies of just things that people have learned. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Anna. and. I'm just going to talk about three things that were kind of touched on already with the highlights. But um, So when I think about how Kenya opened up my eyes, heart, and mind, um, there's three things that come to mind. So the first is the way we were treated. So we were, we were guests in this country, but the second that the plane landed, like we were so welcomed by um, so many people, uh, whether that was just a hello or the host families that we had. But I felt like hospitality as it is defined in the book of Romans was like that that was our entire trip um, so it made me think a lot about not just hospitality and, and what that means in our own lives in the US but what is true love and genuine relationships um, so that was a big thing that stands out to me um, the second has to do with joy and just sharing life with other people um, so mostly days with orphanages or in the slums just seeing children uh, learning so much from them, kind of like we, we were the ones stepping into the environment thinking that um, we had something to share with the kids or provide, but really I learned so much more from those environments and those contexts. So whether it was sharing life uh, with a nun or a child in the slum, um, just seeing people as valuable uh, and um, how, how we can continue to carry out the joy of the gospel just by spending quality time with others. Um, and then the last thing, reflecting on, um, Sarah kind of shared her story about government corruption, 
but coming back it made me think how in the United States government corruption is not um, a major concern like obviously we can always improve but compared to Kenya it's not something that affects our society so um, that opened my eyes definitely for for justice in orphanages and then also in the US with human trafficking um, and yeah so those are three things that I learned and that I've been thinking about since the trip ended. Um, hi, uh, my name is Tim. Uh, I'm a junior here at Bethel and I'm a communications major with a business minor. Um, so going into this trip, <clears throat> I kind of was like, you know what, I want to go somewhere. I want to go somewhere different. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll be able to go to Europe someday. Um, and when else will I be able to go to Kenya? Um, and so when I signed up for this trip, I have never been out of the country before. Um, I went on a cruise, but that doesn't really count. That's kind of like a, let's go hang out in two or three spots in Mexico and um, basically hang out with a bunch of Americans. So um, this trip was pretty, pretty new, and I was like, you know what, we're going for it. Um, and um, it, it lived up to all the expectations. It was unbelievable. Um, Matt and I were actually the only two dudes, um, <laughs> and we still rocked it. We had fun. Um, the girls were great. Uh, we were able to hang out with them all the time. There were a couple times where they had a little girls' night, so we kind of <laughs> we explored and did our thing. But um, there are a couple things that I really want to kind of hit on. Two things that um, really uh, stuck out to me. The first one was, um, as you could see, maybe I'll try to go back to it. Right here. So um, this picture right here, this is probably one of the most um, impacting things that happened to me personally. So I play soccer here at Bethel. And um, this helped me realize, uh, playing soccer with these guys helped me realize how blessed and fortunate we are here. Um, I get to go out to a field that is has beautiful grass. It's babied all summer long for us in the fall. And these kids um, are playing on a dirt patch in in this like in their schoolyard area so we walk up to this um, orphanage and we start asking where's where's the soccer field and they point right at that dirt field and we're like wow like um and so i felt guilty at first but then um just to see their faces and the way they just enjoyed it and they didn't care what they were playing on it's the it's the fact that they were still able to play which was the unbelievable part. So, and I complain about, like when I come, like the, when the soccer team comes back after the summer and they put sod down there in the spot, you're like, oh, dang it, now we're gonna like ruin that spot and it's gonna dry up. And so it's just like, we have no um, right to complain at all. But um, one of the cool things is that we started playing and um, as goals, we had four rocks and we put two on each side and they were probably about this far apart. And we played with a decent ball and so we're playing on this dirt and some of them have sandals some of them are barefoot and then like you get a couple of kids that have some pretty nice soccer shoes but they're pretty worn out so they've been using them for a while and you can tell they've been passed down from generation or not generation but from kid to kid um and we had so much fun um they were running around like crazy um we we actually tied them so i, I think they were maybe like taking it down a level for us but it was actually really cool um and it was fun just to be able to connect with these kids. Um, we had the same same favorite teams, the same favorite soccer players. Um, we both watched the EPL, and um, so I was really able to connect with these kids, and um, they just kind of uh, really impacted my my heart and my view on um, my life. So, which was very very cool. So, and another thing um, that really impacted me was the generosity as well. Um, no matter where we went, uh, no matter who we talked to, um, they were open arms. Um, like we tried in the slum actually, um, was it Mama David, was that her name? Mm -hmm. uh, Mama David, uh, it was in the first slum that we went to. We were walking around and um, we were getting shown around and she knew we were coming and uh, we get to her house and she tried to prepare a meal for us. She barely has anything and she tries to prepare a meal for 14 or like I think it was like 16 of us at the time and it was unbelievable to think that she literally, she's literally almost giving up everything just to feed us, just just, just to show us hospitality um, and just love. So um, that was pretty cool as well. But yeah, this trip was a bunch of firsts for me. I've never been out of the country, never been on a plane for more than three hours, and we had two eight, nine hour plane rides. Um, uh, 
held a crab cra for the first time, bit my finger, screamed on the little girl as I flipped it off. Um, but yeah, this trip was unbelievable, and I, um, I'm so thankful that uh, this group was able to go with me and Phyllis led this trip, um, and it was unbelievable. So, thank you. Thank you. Hi hey everyone, I'm Matt. Um, I, along with Tim, as he was saying, was one of two guys on the trip, and we had an absolute amazing time. The girls were awesome as well, so thank you girls that are here. Um, I really wanted to go to Kenya for kind of two reasons. The first one was I grew up living on Animal Planet, and I love just nature and environment. So one of my dreams was I was going to Kenyan Safari, and that was like, so when I first heard there was a Kenya trip, I'm like, I need to get myself on this trip to go to that. And then the second reason was just to really have God kind of blow blow my mind about the world around me. Because I, like Tim, I had never really traveled outside of America, except for Canada, which is like, I live in Duluth, so it's basically the same thing. Um, yeah, so I, I just, I went into the trip. I actually didn't go to a single um, meeting, and I did not read the itinerary or anything. I just wanted to have absolutely no idea what we were doing. <laughs> And I wanted to just like, just completely go on the fly and just have God kind of open my eyes to the to Kenya. And I think that really was prevalent in Kenya. With some of the girls already talked about Kenyan time. Um, one of my I absolutely love that along with a lot of other people. But it really just it was such a good um, I guess metaphor for kind of how I felt Kenya really impacted me. Because Kenya just was such a beautiful place. The people, the environment, the animals, the plants. I even, I, when I got back, I was looking through my pictures and I realized like uh, maybe a third of them were of like flowers and plants. And I was like, all right, so maybe the girls got to me a little bit. It was just, it was so beautiful. And just every corner you turned around was like, there was some awesome little thing going on over here or some awesome person that I had never would have met if I didn't um, just take my time and really get to know the place around me and it was so so cool just to see that so yeah that was probably my favorite part of Kenya and God definitely definitely showed me the amazing people and so yeah that's that's it I'll give it over to Shuri it was great to have a resident botanist along so <laughs> whenever there was some creepy crawly thing that would be right there yeah All right, um, as Matt said, I'm Cherie. Um, and I'm just gonna share a little bit about how um, Kenya kind of changed my perspective and even, I guess, kind of changed how I live my life a bit. Um, so like along with all the memories and all the photos and all the new friends I came home from Kenya with, um, it's, um, I brought, like I said, I brought a lot of new perspective. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me if I experienced culture, sh culture shock going over to Kenya. Um, but the funny thing was, I think I actually experienced more culture shock coming back um, because I was seeing my world through a set of new eyes. And honestly, I wasn't, I wasn't a huge fan of it anymore. Because um, my world in, here in Minnesota is so incredibly different than the world I lived in for three weeks in Kenya. Um, and it's still hard for me to believe that these two worlds exist on the same planet. Because um, like everyone's kind of touched on already, poverty is huge in Kenya and it's nearly everywhere you look. Um, but within that poverty, what struck me the most is just the incredible generosity um, that these people have when they have so little to begin with. Um, and like, um, Tim kind of touched on this already, but when we were walking through Mathari Slum, we visited a home of a friend of Jessica's, um, and she lived in like this one room little shed, and she welcomed us in, and she had this big bowl of rice that she wanted to feed us, and we were like, we just couldn't bring ourselves to take food from her when there was so many people around us going hungry, and when she probably, um, you know, she probably digs through the mounds of trash to sell things to get her money for food, which a lot of people do in Mathari and in Kibera, because um, there's loads of trash everywhere. Um, but another instance of this generosity um, that I kind of saw was when we stayed with our host families. And Emma and I, um, 
we were blessed enough to stay with the, Mugu, the Mugos. Um, and they were, I just can I can hardly begin to describe how generous and how kind and how hospitable they were. Um, they always made sure we were well fed and often really urged us to take more food even when we were sure we couldn't fit any more in our stomachs. Um, and beyond that, they just constantly insisted and asked if we needed anything and tried to go out of their way to give us things that we didn't need at all. Um, and they also expressed very often just how thankful they were to have us there. And that was so incredible because they talk about how blessed they were to have us and how happy they were to have us and how much they love having guests. And they even, when we said grace before meals, they often went on for minutes about how thankful they were to have us there. And that was just like, kind of blew my mind open because like we were so thankful that they were willing to open their home to us two strangers and just kind of show us how they live their lives. Um, so yeah, um, people in Kenya live their lives very simply, but um, we've seen that out of that simplicity, they're willing to give to the point of like uncomfortability. Um, so I guess returning to the United States, I kind of found myself a little bit bitter to just kind of see um, how I was living in this land of incredible excess. Um, and there's always, always more than we need, always more than we want usually. Um, and so I kept asking God, how do I reconcile these two different worlds that I've come to know and love? Um, and how do I make sense of why I'm here, here at Bethel, here in the United States, when across the world there are 1.2 million people living in Kibera um, right now? And now that I know that it's more than just a number, and now that I've seen their faces. Um, and honestly, I don't really know how to make sense of that yet. Um, it's a process, but I do know that I take less for granted and I aspire to be as kind and as giving and um, as beautiful as these people that we encountered in Kenya. Um, and I think one other thing my eyes were open to is that while people experiencing poverty may have less um, when it comes to material things or even to opportunities, which I feel like is more tragic, um, I think they see life in a way that is very difficult to grasp um, when you're living comfortably. Um, while there's more struggle, there's also more potential for finding true joy, which most everyone has kind of touched on already. Um, but that joy manifested is such a beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it was a great experience. Thank you. That's our presentation. If you have any questions, I'm sure many of our people yeah. are here to answer questions. Thanks.